So what building is this again, did you say? This is the Calf building, the Catesby Aero Research Facility. Okay. Essentially 70 metres long, 20 metres wide. Um, they'll be able to bring race teams, car manufacturers, uh, motorcycle teams, uh, uh, push bike racing teams. They'll yeah. come here, they'll be able to turn their HGVs in this front area. Yeah. Reverse into these doors, these will shut and then I'll give them a secret compartment. Okay. Once they're inside, they can offload their kit, they can set themselves up and then move into the room further along. Um, well, they can register their kit, they can make sure it's set up as they want. And they'll drive through a link tunnel that will connect this building to the actual tunnel, the other side. Do their testing. Team B turns up, they offload their kit in the other door. Yeah. In again in secrecy, everything's in secrecy and controlled. Because when Team A finish their testing in the tunnel, they come up, put their kit back away. Team B takes over, goes through. And that can be a 24 7 cycle. Oh yeah, it's going on board. Ground work is put in the other door, drainage in the shallow drainage. Yeah. It should be levelling the stone back out. And there's no power, there's no water at the moment, it's uh, still being decided. So we're running off temporary generator, power there, up with lights. It's the only activity going on at the moment inside the building. We've got all the deck sheets down there, we need to get them up onto the mezzanine fairly soon. So these guys have recompacted all the stone and put all the trenches back up. Yeah. You can see the tunnel portal. Yeah, have a look. Two compartments, one slightly bigger than the other. This is where the teams can prepare their kit, come through this door. So that's going to be completely private now. Completely private. There'll be block work, full height. Right. Um, this is uh, a power server room above. Yeah. But this one's going to have limited headroom, smaller vehicles through there, probably the race teams. This side can take commercial vehicles, a larger door. Right. Okay. They come through into here, then this is the main control room. There'll be a a turntable at the end, and then yeah. closer to us there'll be a, a way bridge. Yeah. So they'll be able to prep the cars, get them tested, set their test primary test parameters, and then through that door that you see the large door, there'll be a link tunnel that links this to the actual tunnel. To that. So there'll be a 300 meter long tunnel. Yeah. Up past the first vent shaft in the tunnel, and they'll be able to drive through that then. The refueling will be just outside in a controlled area, just outside. Yeah. They'll run minimal fuel to do the amount of testing that they need to do. They'll be able to come back here then on the turntable and go back to be fuel should they want to, but it will be military precision. It is well thought out. Yeah. yeah. A couple of petrol just to get going yeah. Cladding install going on on the outside, the roof they're finishing up on the top. Yeah. This is the excavation for the, uh, the turntable. So literally, car come on here and then it can just physically turn it yep. whatever way you want pointed. It's going to be a six metre or six and a half metre turntable, so. It's fair sized vehicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think they're looking to go long wheel base HGV, uh, sort of uh, commercials, transits, Mercedes. Kind of thing, no traffic. Um, restricted by height. Yeah. The doors match the bridge as you come through. Oh, okay. So, so the largest vehicle that can, can get, get through, we'll get in. Yeah. So bring it in parts and assemble it. Each side you can see. Yeah, that's to do a lot of strengthening. There are 370 yeah. soil nails this side. <laughs> Go on. Up to 14 metres deep. Okay. 
that holds back all this embankment. The embankment is a mixture of clay and ironstone. Yeah. So it's a slip plane. It could move, yeah. There's a water course runs through the back of those trees, so this that's what that's holding up. The opposite side there's three hundred and sixty or three hundred and twenty nails up to eight metres deep. Doing the same. Uh, we the fields drain on that side. Yeah. They collect and then the water gets discharged down to new drains that run down Around through the there. tunnel. When that floods and that drain can't cope, there's an overflow called a siphon, which hydraulically takes water from this side of the field down underneath on the, the edge where yeah. you walk past and then transfers it back up to the water course on that side. Oh my god. So, so you're taking it from there and putting it over there? Yeah. So the building is positioned strategically to allow back movement yeah. out here. And then as far as we go that way because of the siphon. Yeah. Um, we didn't want to uh, remove the siphon. Start playing and move there. Yeah. So you see the tunnel completed in 1897. It's very well sized. It's a uh, 27 foot diameter. It is complete in its shape, so it's as um, egg shaped. For strength. Um, it's 1.5 miles long. It's on a constant 1 in 172 gradient. It's dead straight. Um, it took two years to build. And it's rumoured that there were an average of four people per month died, died doing this project. It's um, rumoured to be the biggest brick structure of its kind in Europe. And if, uh, if the uh, the information is correct, there's 30 million bricks. My god. the light at the end of the tunnel literally, literally. Um, quite often because of the atmospherics if there's a mist outside it'll be foggy in here and you can't see the far end okay so on a clear day as it is today yeah with uh, fairly little wind that's what you can see down there is the same shape as this here yeah so they've, they've mirrored the doors and it is constant it is this shape it's similar type of uh, soot moss algae different places um, there's so what we got to do in here we got to we've got to fix the drains yeah because the drains are as you see them there they're, they're silted up very it's a brick culvert they're open chambers so we've got to cover the chambers we've got to um, fix the, uh, the soffit yeah we then got to put extra drainage in where it's wet yeah um, to improve efficiency and then we've got to build up to a stone and then we've got to put a concrete sink at the moment a concrete floor yeah then we put crash barriers down each side and we put a tarmac running strip on top of on that. top of that and it literally have we got to do anything obviously clean all this up and there's some element of cleaning there's yeah. an element of um, brick replacement there's Repairs. an element of uh, repointing that's to be interpreted from the Carillion reports um, on the maintenance the tunnel itself is owned by the local um, council it'll be leased by yeah. the client yeah so there's conversation to be had about how much the client needs to do to actually operate it yeah rather than interfere with the structure of the actual and then when they so obviously why why are they using this tunnel to do what they're doing they're using this tunnel because um it is the largest straightest best condition tunnel in the UK and it just happens to be a couple of miles from Brackley where they're based yeah um, they've scoured the country this is a larger diameter tunnel than you normally get on steam railway it is yeah I've done a few myself and this because, is the biggest one yeah this would this would have linked up with the Victorian Channel Tunnel yeah originally had it been a success so it's it's built to take the larger French train so they literally bring vehicles in here and test them for aerodynamics because you've got a perfect straight run and in an atmosphere they can virtually control. Cycles, runners, 
it's basically ballistic. So anything that moves through air, our client is a doctor of air movement, fluid movement, yeah. hydraulics, um, and tests anything or anyone that wants to be tested or improved. He's got an MBE for his service to, services to sport. Um, sky cycling, all of the sky cyclists have been modeled, aero modeled by Rob. So he knows what he's doing then, basically. Boardman's, yeah, Boardman cycles, they've all been modeled by Rob. If you now are a customer of Boardman, you can go to their new facility on the edge of Eversham. Yeah. And you can buy a bike, you can take it into their mini wind tunnel and you can be modeled they'll set you up set you up to find your best your best, best position, position on for their cycling. bikes yeah it's like going custom fit golf clubs yeah Brilliant. marginal gains it's um for the same effort the same output if you are matched to a very similar athlete on the same bike if you are aero modeled and you've got the tiniest margin of improvement yeah over your rival over 15 20 mile race you know that's that's seconds. that's a big difference yeah so that's what they're into um rob's provided all the aero research modeling for the winter olympic british teams which, yeah. so all the medalists of the last three olympics the winter olympics rob has uh, worked with them um he used to be the aero engineer for um bar honda um reynard motorsport so he's so done quite a bit then. When Braun sold up, or Braun bought BAR Honda, Rob started Total Sim. Oh, fair play. Um, and so, he's, he's now got four yeah. offices worldwide. So how long is this project due to go on for now? Um, we've been here 12 months. We should have been into the tunnel. This has been stopped because of bats. Oh, okay, yeah. There's 86 bats. Um, we haven't been able to secure a license um, purely because the size of this, it's no one's known how to handle it properly. That no, is quite big. So there's been a lot of caution, which means that we've lost the window of opportunity this year. So we yeah. think um, our next application goes in uh, the end of this week. Yeah. We think then that will give us license to come and start working in here um, in spring when the bats stop hibernating and move out. So there's been a lot of extra study. To understand how many bats there are, where they're living, um, the north end particularly is a big swarming site. Right. Where they all meet, they gather before they, they go disappear out in couples yeah. to, to mate. Um, we'll take you around there if you want. It's a, it's a good, it's a trip around there. So, um, so once you get the go ahead for going in the tunnel, how long would it take to complete the project? Um, when we looked at it initially, we we're looking at eighteen months. We've only got access from this end. Oh. So we have to start essentially at the far yeah, end and then we work, work our backwards. way in yeah. to a point where we can work our way back out. No. So there's a series of strengthening works and you can see the amount of mineral that comes through the brickwork. Yeah. There's, there's a series of those as you go down through the tunnel, there's wet areas, there's dry areas. Um, so there's, we need opinion from experts on yeah. exactly what we do, how we do it to protect the structure. Um, no, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for explaining that. It's a very interesting job.